All right. Mertz Jaffer here, and I am very excited about this interview. I am here with Gretchen Cordy from the original season of Survivor, Survivor Barneo. Um, obviously, I think everyone knows what an impact this show and that season specifically had on my life. Completely changed the direction of everything I was doing. I was supposed to be a lawyer right now. Saw the show, got the TV guide, and just basically cut bait. I just quit everything I was doing, dedicated a site to the show, the site blew up. I became a journalist. I now throw all the finale parties. Um, and I got my own reality show. And it all started from that. So, Gretchen, thank you so much uh, for joining me today. No. Don't, sometimes you wish you were a lawyer. Sometimes. Not at all. No, not at all. Like, I think that um, I, I, I just knew. You know what I mean? Like, I remember, believe it or not, I was a wrestling reporter prior to Survivor's debut. And I remember getting a TV guide in the mail that said, you know, 16 people are going to be on an island. They're going to vote each other out. The last person gets a million dollars. And I just knew, like, you just have this feeling about things. And I'm just like, that sounds really compelling. Like, that sounds like just an amazing microcosm of society. Like, are they going to get along? Are they not going to get along? Like, 16 strangers. Like, so is that what sort of drew you to the concept as well? I think that's where I want to start. Like, how did you first find out about it? Okay, well, let me ask you a question first. Did you get the Pagong issue? guide or did you get the toggy issue of the tv guide uh, i actually got i mean i was a total nerd at the time i actually got both uh so yes i had both i had both so i was um i was driving to work one day and and i kind of heard something peripherally on the radio about a uh, survivor competition and but i didn't hear enough uh it was you know a morning show and they were talking about it and uh, I got there and got out and then somebody else had heard it on the way and they said oh this is Gretchen this this has you like all mm -hmm. over it mm -hmm. oh you sign up for this and and at the time I thought it was a survivor show you know what I'm saying like based on yeah like eco challenge or something right right, right. I, yeah and, and I was a fan of Eco Challenge, but there was this, like, this big entry fee and the whole nine yards. I'm like, oh, it's a free Eco Challenge is what I thought. So I, you know, started putting my packet together. And now, and now tell me about your background, like prior to this, like why did that sort of like survivalist kind of show appeal to you? Because um, I had been in the Air Force for six years and I was a survival instructor. So I thought, oh, I got this, I got it pegged. You know, if I'm up against, you know, Joe Blow from Kansas, who, you know, I, like, I taught this, this is what I do, and, um, nope, mistake. <laughs> so, I think, um, I mean, I'm talking right from that first episode with Sonia, I, I just, I just had never seen anything like this on TV before, you know, like, I just loved it, like, it was basically, like, it was just such a, so I keep saying that word, but it really was. It was like this microcosm of society. Like, I'm sure I don't have to tell you about that first challenge. Sonia is struggling. Now, there's two ways to deal with that situation in everyday life. You know, like some people would say, oh, you know, like she's older. You know, we should like be propping her up. But yet the piranhas in the sea are just like, no, no, no. She's our weakest link. Like, let's just nix her, you know? And I was just like, man. This is really grounding humanity to its like core level. Did you realize that when you were on the island? Did you realize that like the decisions that were being depicted on this show are how people sort of, you could make a comparison to how people live their lives today or like outside of the show? I think, okay, I realized it earlier on mm -hmm. when, when one of the final, so you put in your packet um, and then you got selected for, uh, you know, a kind of a drawdown interview. And mine was in Chicago. And uh, so I drove up to Chicago and they put us in a room. It was like a, um, like a green room, a pre-interview room. And one by one, they would take you out and they, you know, kind of found a line of questioning that they could go <laughs> off of when you were in the interview room. And, uh, and so they were asking me questions like, um, if you found out that the person you were sleeping next to was a lesbian, would that make you angry? Like, what or what is this? You know, and I was actually so pissed off at that point that here I had wasted resources and, and all this stuff to, to come here for this soap opera. Mm -hmm. That by the time I got pulled into the interview, I was kind of, I thought I had been sold a bill of goods. And so. Right. The way that it was like, oh, you're going to be out there facing the elements and stuff. And then the next thing you know, it's like these, he said, she said. So I think that actually helped me get 
selected because when I went in there, I was no longer nervous. I was, yeah. I was pissed and, you know, and, and sassy. And so I think that that's something they saw in me that they thought, oh, this person's going to be okay out there. Is that when um, the switch? Is that when the switch turned for you? Like you said that initially you thought that it was like a free eco challenge. Um, it was right. it during that interview process that you realized that it might be something more than that. Right. That's that's uh, that's the first clue. And mm -hmm. then I, by the time I went home from that interview, I thought I don't I don't even care if I get picked. You know, at that point. And uh, but then when I got the call for Los Angeles, I'm like, ah, I'm this far. Why not? <laughs> so, <laughs> but yeah. Um, I didn't, you know, it was really difficult. I say that when, when I went out, you know, we had done so many training exercises yeah. where everybody's working together and everybody's there for a common goal and everybody, you know, and it was really hard for me to, to not fall right back into that whole, like, here, let's all work together. Let's support each other. Let's, and all of that kind of behind the back stuff. I just... It just wasn't in my nature and, you know, and especially I know people when you, when you're watching it from home and, you know, a lot of people like they just had dinner or they're eating dinner. So you slept last night and you're well fed and you're cognizant and, and you, I think, find it hard to put yourself into the mindset of you're exhausted, you're starving, you're surrounded by people you don't know, you haven't and your decision-making process is different at that point, mm -hmm. you know? And uh, so it's easy to judge decisions that people are making on the show, but if you were there, you'd be in a different, a different place. Um, so I want to know sort of like when during that process, I think I've heard stories about that first season. Like I know obviously that rule hasn't changed with the seasons that happen now. Like you were pretty much isolated with, the contestants until you got there you couldn't converse with the people until you actually got there right did you get to see them like I'm sure you were all housed up in the same like place so you had an idea of who might be playing with you you just couldn't converse right right um uh when we got to the final interview process in Los Angeles mm -hmm. and they put us all up at the same hotel and they said like other people are here if we see you talking you're out and you know this is when they were going to make their final decisions and you would see people eating at the hotel restaurant like one per table and so that you would know that person you know looks the part and they're probably here for the same reason i know some people talked i didn't i i didn't i'm a i'm a hard line rule follower so i did oh so you did see a little bit of conversation um i heard that people had conversations right. i heard that people left and you know they, you weren't supposed to leave the hotel and they left the hotel and people were doing all kinds of stuff that i learned afterwards you know, I, I think I think that, uh, well, I guess the next question is sort of like, did you ever think you would be talking about this experience 20 years and 40 seasons later? Absolutely. You mean when it was going on? When it was going on. And even right afterwards. No, um, when I found out they were doing a second one and why it surprised me, I don't know, because I knew how well the first one did, you know, where they, the finale there was supposed to be no finale and that finale was added to the, you know, um, because they were looking for more advertising, like all of a sudden people wanted to throw money at the show. And so yeah, yeah. they decided to have the finale where they could have sponsors and all kinds of stuff, you know, and they hadn't put that in our contract. And so I, I it was, um, Richard says it was him, but I think I heard it was Stacy who said, look, we don't, we're not any under any obligation. And if we all kind of hold out on this, you know, for some pay. So we got paid <laughs> I know. We got paid $10,000 to do the finale because it wasn't in the contract. Exactly. And that's basically yeah. now been a carryover since then. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then I think, you know, people who just watch sporadically tune in for the finale just to see, you know, how it all pans out. Now we're going to, we're going to get into the, we're going to get into the game like in a little bit, but I think the first thing that people that are here and that will watch this later want to know is like, how close is that cast? Like, you know, one of the things you might not be aware of, because you were telling me before we started this thing, is that, like, you don't really watch anymore. But I can tell you that, like, in recent seasons, you know, I'd say probably at least from 15, 16 onwards, a lot of the events that I go to have most of the cast there. Season one is not like that. Season one, I mean, you'll see Jervis every now and again. Um, you'll see, you know, maybe Ramona every now and again. Uh, but that's pretty much it. Like, how how much do you sort of stay in touch with everyone? And 
have there ever been any kind of like reunions with the Borneo cast members? Well, you know, right, right after the show and probably for the subsequent maybe three years or something, like everyone went to the charity events and yeah. stuff. And then, you know, as more and more, and then they started opening it up to Big Brother and as, um, and, and um, Amazing Race. Mm. And so as more and more people like started to, you know, join in, like we just kind of, you know, uh, but you do have people that, you know, like Jervis and stuff that, that like to go to them. And, um, but no, it's just like, you have to kind of get back to your normal life. Right. And right. most people don't have jobs that allow them the luxury to like, just take off on a whim, you know? I thought that, well, was, was there any, any discussion about doing something like now that it's 20 years after, like, you know, almost like a high school reunion, was there any discussion for anything to take place prior to all this pandemic stuff this year? Or was that not even like sort of, uh, no. Yeah, last year, um, last year we invited everybody to my house and um, Sonia came all the way from California and it's hard for her. I mean, you know, she's older and she's had multiple um, medical problems and, you know, she came, um, Joel and Ramona and Jervis and Rich came and so we just kind of hung out and, and talked about old times and I mean, honestly, that was really the first time we were together where there wasn't some kind of structure, like, and then yeah. you, you know, meet the fans and sign autographs. And then you do this, you know, we just had, you know, three days just to hang out. And uh, it was a lot of fun. And we planned to do it again this year in May. Of course, it didn't happen. So. Right. Yes. Yes. Um, what about the, what about the ones that like people have not heard any updates from? Like the ones that I'm thinking of are like, Greg Buis only recently resurfaced. He's come to a couple of things. Colleen Haskell, nobody has ever heard of, like, again. Um, there was Stacey Stillman. We don't know a lot about her. Have you kept in touch with these people, sort of like the more elusive cast members? Um, I had some contact with Jervis. It was a couple of, of years ago. We were, you know, and I invited him to something. I can't remember what was going on. And his wife was pregnant at the time, and he said it would just be a really bad time to get away. So, uh, yeah, so, but I haven't talked to him since. Colleen, I know, is a mommy now and married, and, you know, and I think she just really wanted to separate herself from the whole, yeah. whole shebang. You know, it wasn't, I don't think it was a pleasant experience for her, and, um, and she just wants to have a, a regular life, and I, I respect that. Yeah. Uh, and what about Greg? Um, no, that was great. I mean, Greg's the one that had the baby. Oh, know, sorry. Okay. I thought you said Jervis. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah. No, I know Jer Jervis probably have babies everywhere, but, yeah. um, you know, Jervis, but yeah. Uh, yeah um, so no, Stacy, I don't like, I knew that she had a big falling out with CBS and she, you know, she had a bad taste in her mouth for the show and the whole nine yards. So I don't, wouldn't expect her to show up at anything, to be honest. Um, I want to, I want to get into the game now a little bit. So obviously I, I've never really seen a season, you know, a lot of people talk about now, like, what is the best season? Like, what is the definition of the best season? Right. You know, it's hard, it's hard to sort of say anything bad about Borneo. Like, Borneo is the nucleus of this whole, like, franchise. I still feel to this day, Borneo was the most representative. And I think a lot of people see that. Like, it was the core concept of the show, where you had an older cast. You know, you had, like, Rudy, the Navy SEAL. You had, like, Rich, the corporate trainer. You had you, the survivalist. You know, like, really different walks of life. Um, have you watched... I know you told me you haven't watched much lately. Have you noticed that that's changed at all from what you have watched since your season aired? That, like, it's more models in California than it is, like, Navy SEALs and uh, survivalists? Right. I think um, you can just tell by people's teeth, you know? Like, the on the first season, you know... <laughs> <laughs> we had crooked teeth and since then you haven't seen any crooked teeth so right, right. I think that's a lot to you know the aesthetic having changed and um I always compare it to like if you're a Star Wars fan and you look at you know the production now and the glitz and how quick it moves and stuff mm -hmm. and then go watch you know because people have told me oh I didn't see you know I didn't see Borneo until after I had gotten into it and then I went back and watched Borneo and right it looked right so ridiculously slow and archaic you know and I, to me it's a lot like Star Wars you can't go back and watch the but if you watched it from the beginning it's been a progression that it really has it really yeah. has um you know like the the term blindside is thrown around a lot you know like oh they didn't see it coming they didn't see it coming like this is what the show is I really feel and I don't think anyone that's here can deny that you were the first victim of what we know now is like a classic survivor blindside. I want you to take me back to you being <laughs> you know, voted out. Um, I'll never forget the look on your face. And it's funny because 
your look was not the look that people at home had, like watching it, because we knew, we knew what was happening, right? You obviously- you knew what was going? Well, tell, take, take me back to that moment. Did you know, like, did you know that like this whole like Toggy thing was happening? Um, yes, in a way I did. Um, because um, there had been like, sometimes when you would go to a, uh, to a challenge, like you would have a couple seconds to talk to the other team and, um, and, and Kelly would, you know, talk to, to um, the girls and, and say, oh, I think this is going on. Like she knew what was going on, but I think this is going on. And, um, and so we had, we had a pretty good idea. Of course, everybody was denying it, you know, and Jeff would ask, is there an alliance? And they would deny it, but what are they going to say? Of course mm -hmm. there is. And I had thought about it because um, if someone said if there was a tie, then the person who had gotten the most prior votes, mm -hmm. that's right, kind of the one would be the one that would be the tiebreaker. Mm -hmm. And uh, and and they kept saying, "Oh no, it's time for Rudy." Like everybody's saying Rudy was going to go. And I thought, well, if we could get over there and vote for Rudy, um, and they voted for Rudy, then then we would kind of have the the upper hand. But it was all very, uh, it was kind of like a mind uh, blank where, you know, they chose, the production team chose whose side we were going to. Right, right. And, and so now you're out of your element, they're in their element. Like the first night in the shelter, which was falling apart and I like completely retired and everything, um, you know, Rudy kept kicking me in the head and, and I kept saying, you know, like, Rudy, that's my head, you know, and he goes like, you're in, that's my space, you know, that's, <laughs> you know, that's, and you really just felt like, you know, a, a bastard at a family reunion, right, where, right. where you're kind of out of it, and um, it just, I, I think it was, that was part of it, and part of it was, it was just really difficult for me to gang up on somebody, right. you know, right. when you think about, um, if you're all playing a, a game and everybody knows the rules of the game and they're set out beforehand and this is the way the game is played but there was no set of rules it was just us thrown into this and this is how it works you know you just make it up as you go along and it seemed like um like in retrospect or or had i been on the second you know had i not yeah, been on yeah. the first australia game, australia yeah yeah, had I gone to Australia instead, it's like, this is the way the game is played and all is fair. Right. And when people say, you know, oh, it was a, they were blindsided. I mean, after the first episode, can, or the first season, can anyone say they were blindsided? Because you got to expect it all yeah, time. Totally. Yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, in a way, I kind of knew that it was coming. I was hoping for the best. I know that's not the way you play the game, <laughs> but... You know, it's it's the way that that I had to play the game. Does it does it bother you that like people still refer to Pagong as being like naive? You know, like I get your argument about how like we didn't really know how this thing was gonna be played and Richard gets a lot of credit for sort of seeing things in a way that like nobody else saw them. Does it bother you that people say Pagong was so naive? Like how could they not see what was going on? Like after Gretchen went, why didn't they still try and get together, you know? Um, I, yeah, I don't know what, you know, I don't know what became of it after, you know, I don't know the, the bottom line to why they didn't. Um, and at that point, you know, to try to get somebody, I think they could have worked on Kelly. I really yeah. think that, yeah. You know, um, but I, I just think, you know, Greg, Greg was done playing. Um, and Colleen was done playing. And I think, especially on the first one, because... It's funny because um, I had read somewhere that, that Mark said that he picked kind of the people that he picked because he thought Americans were weak and that we would, you know, he was afraid that, the, you know, if he didn't pick the right people, they would yeah. quit. Yeah. That a dollars wasn't, you know, but I don't, you know, I think he learned since there that there was a sense of adventure, like Greg went for the adventure. I went for the adventure. I mean, would I have loved a million dollars? Yes. To be honest, you know, just the, just the, the letters that I got afterwards, like, oh, you know, my child has cancer. If you've made any money, like, oh, if I got that million dollars, it'd have been gone a long time ago. Yeah, you know? yeah. I don't think I publicly could have won a million dollars and been successful with it. 
So I think things all happen as they should happen. Um, I'm a different person now, but um, you know, you learn a lot of lessons as you go. And I think the people learned a lot of lessons from that first one. I think the people going into play the second one, the people going into yeah. play subsequent ones, you know, you're all working off of what, you know. Um, there's been a lot of uh, talk about like Greg's vote and the whole like pick a number jury question and that like, you know, this, this amazing like moment of like pop culture history with that first finale that I believe was watched by 52 million people. Um, you know, it was basically decided by this guy who randomly like just asked the two contestants to pick a number. Can you sort of, I don't know if you've talked to Greg about his vote, you know, for Richard, um, but have you and like can you sort of like clear it up once and for all like did he randomly just base it on like who picked the right number or was there more to it than that um gosh I, I hate that i can't remember but he did explain it to me and you know what he is he's a genius mm -hmm. i mean he is a he is smart and he doesn't do anything randomly like he when he was playing with jeff he was playing with jeff on purpose you know he um i think uh he he had and I golly I can't rem I can't remember. Next time you see him, ask him because he does have. Oh, a we never see him. You're you're basically our Sven Gali for Borneo. You know, like so, like it's basically what you tell us is what we're gonna write in the history books because like there's no other Plato that really shares a lot of details about that season. You know. Okay, so I'm going to f I'm gonna figure it out. I'm gonna remember it or see where I'm in it or whatever or I'm gonna find him and you know and and then I'll, you know that is that is one of the lingering questions that i have over the last like 20 years you know i think he has talked about it before but like yeah. definitively a lot of people don't know that answer you know and it's sort of one of those things yeah. sort of one of those answers you need to have you know yeah no he he um he had a reason for that okay unlike sean he had a reason for what he was doing sean said he did but come on <laughs> come on um, I want to obviously, um, you know, it's it's gotten to the point where like there's a obvious. I know you haven't really like sort of been in the scene or like going to a lot of these events, and you know it's not really a thing that like you do or like a lot of those early season people do, but a lot of these people do, um, and like there's a big survivor community, um, and it's kind of weird because even though a lot of the times you haven't met somebody like BB or you know a lot of people haven't met like Rudy, you almost feel like you know them, you know, so. How would you sort of describe your relationship with those two? I think we've now lost them both. Um, how would you describe um, your relationship with both? Um, I, I loved them both. I didn't love um, Rudy so much on the island, <laughs> <laughs> but um, I respected him so much, so much. I can't even imagine he was, I think he was 72 when he played and BB was older as well. And it was grueling. And those men both had such chutzpah. I can't, I can't even. They, um, BB was a wealthy man and, uh, and he went for the adventure, you know? And sometimes when you see people who have, you know, you, like you wonder like what, what's Elon Musk doing on Twitter? Like yeah. what, what, you know, like what, what is that all about? And I, there's something that's not fed by the success that they have. And I think that's why, you know, BB went, but he was used to calling the shots. He had his own company and he made a lot of money and he was used to saying to somebody jump and they would say how high. And then he gets on this place where nobody has any respect for him or his leadership or, um, you know, the things that he's accomplished. And it was like, there was this period where um, he, he had had it. And he said, this was, of course, before, you know, he got voted off, but he, he said um, to one of the producers, like, get me a phone. And they're like, why, BB? And he's like, no, he goes, I, I'm going to get, I'm going to get, I'm getting off this island. And they're like, what? And he's like, no, I'm calling in a helicopter. I'm getting off this island. And they're like, we're going to go get Mark. And Mark literally came, you know, over and came to the side of the island and they had a big screaming match. And, and Mark's like, you can go anytime you want, BB, but you have to say, I, I quit. Right, exactly, but yes. Not disappearing from the show, you know, like your helicopter's not coming in and that's the end. You have to quit. Um, and he wouldn't say the words, I quit. Which and Mark so, probably knew as well, right? So Right, yeah, right. Because, yeah. you know, there was a lot of ego involved there. And, um, it, yeah, so he, uh, he wanted to go that night. He had, he was done. He didn't, 
he didn't want to come out and say it, but he and I had a like personal conversation and, and he said, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm done. And, um, and to be totally honest, he would have been the one to go anyway. Right. Right. Um, uh, so was there like, um, did you attend any service for him? Do you still stay in touch with his family? I, I realized that like you had probably one of the closer relationships out there. Or was it sort of like, you know, that part of our lives has been closed. Like how closely in contact have you been or were you with him after the show? I saw him a couple times after the show and then it kind of, you know, it's so much easier for people to stay in contact now. Right. Um, like I haven't seen Jenna in forever. She didn't come to the thing, but she's on Twitter and we talk back and forth. We'll DM each other. And, um, and so it's much easier to stay kind of like in contact or up to date than it was back then where you were, you know, calling somebody. Um, I, I regret that I didn't reach out to him more, but mm -hmm. I think too, he was a little embarrassed by the show. Mm -hmm. And I think he just kind of wanted to close that door. That seems to be, that seems to be a trend with that first season. You know, we talked about like Colleen before sort of like done with it. Now BB sort of like done with it. Um, do you think that that has changed? Has that been one of the fundamental changes from this show? Because now people just cannot wait to get on Survivor. Um, you know, whether win or lose, I mean, people are going to know who I am. Like, I'm probably going to get a verified Twitter account as soon as I leave. You know, like, do you feel like that mentality and attitude towards the show by the contestants has changed over the years? I think it would have, I think it would have to. Um, you know, Twitter didn't even exist. I don't Neither think. Did Facebook, really, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so it was, I think, uh, you know, that you get a different set of people, mm -hmm. you know, as the show progresses, you'll get different kinds of people who are putting their packets in, um, than you did the first couple of times where there's multiple reasons that people go. And, and now there's even more reasons that people go like nobody knew previous, like to me, it was like to to go on Letterman or, mm -hmm. you know, or to, it just, it just, it's, was unfathomable at the time that it would turn into anything mm -hmm. to me. It seemed like, you know, when I would talk to friends about Eco Challenge, like nobody watched it. No, and right. that's kind of what I thought this would be, you know, like, oh my God, what? It's a show? That's literally like, after I got back, I'm like, this is going to be a show. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, that's why all the cameras were there, you know? <laughs> Um, one of the, one of the questions that I know the community has been asking a lot is like a lot of the times now, since there've been 40 seasons, you know, we see fans versus favorites, or we see heroes versus villains, or we see blood versus water where it's like family members. My question to you is, have they ever come back to you and said, Gretchen, we want to see you again? Cause I'm sure that they have, but can you dispel that rumor if they haven't? Um, I got three different three different times and it's been a while I got calls like would you have any interest and I've always said yeah I have interest and um then a couple of years later I get a call do you have any interest I'm like I have as much interest as I have the last time you called right. but I mean when you look at it like I'm not a bathing beauty and I'm not drama like I didn't do like a speech at the end and you know what I mean like what really you know, what would be the draw? Well, the draw, I can tell you, the draw would be somebody who, like, went there to do the survivalist aspect of the show and didn't play the politics. Somebody who, like, if we gave her a second chance, perhaps has learned from Richard Hatch, perhaps would play a little bit differently, perhaps would be able to spell alliance in a second season that if she got the opportunity. I think that would be the draw. Um... <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I don't know. I'll put in a, I'll put in like a, I'll put in a word for you. I mean, I, I've always been interested in that. Like, I always thought that like, if, if you got a chance to go back, I feel like that's a very compelling story arc. Like, would you still, you know, care about, you know, how people are doing at camp? Would you still care about the shelter? Would you still care about the fire? Or would you go back with an unresolved desire to win, knowing what you would have to do to get there, knowing the steps that every winner has taken, like the lying and the backstabbing and the alliances? I think it would be interesting to see if you could have it both ways. Mm -hmm. And do you that, still think that you could? Do you still think you could? I think that I could. I think that I could. I think that there's, you know, um, I, yeah, I think there's like a lot of good in the world. And I think that people, if they're treated fairly, you know, I, I mean, could that be pie in the sky? It could, but I mean, that's the way I've lived my life and I feel very successful. Right, you know? right. Um, 
Yeah, I mean, I, you know, Warren Buffett, who's got more money than, you know, said that if it's, um, you know, the true measure of success is if the, you know, the people you want to love you actually love you. And, and I feel like I've been super successful all my life and I think I could pull it off where you, that the people who you are taking the prize from would be happy for you to have the prize. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, do you, did you watch any of the last season? Like, did you watch any of the winners, like bringing all the winners back? Did you catch any of it? Or is it still like not even something you even tuned into? I know you said you don't really watch it, but I thought the winner season might be, you know, an exception to the rule. I am a cord cutter and I don't have Hulu. So, wow. I so none of it. <laughs> haven't seen a thing. I haven't seen a thing, no. When, when would you say was the last time you actually caught an episode of Survivor that wasn't related to your season at all? Like, when was the last time? Like, what year, maybe? Yikes. Wow. Yeah, it's been a long time. I'll tell you when, um, you know, when I kind of got a sour taste for it was I watched the episode where the girls stripped for uh, oh, peanut butter. See, yeah, peanut butter. Jenna and Heidi on Amazon. Sorry, it's a, I'm an encyclopedia. Yeah, you are. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I watched it and they like they profess that it's a family show and like and I just like I don't want little girls thinking that's the way you get ahead in the world. Right, you right, know? right. I I thought of you know like it just why would you why would you even offer that like what does that have to do with the show like were the guys offered the same thing do they get you know peanut butter and chocolate for strip it's just, I, I hated that moment. There's no reflection on the, them, you know, you do what you have to do and whatever. And that's, everybody's playing their own game. But I mean, it just, it didn't sit well with me. Um, so would you say, that was like, I don't know, 2004, 2005-ish. So not since then, really. I mean, you can be honest. Like, it's a, it, this isn't a judgment contest. I'm just curious personally. It seems, um, yeah, it seemed, it seemed not so long ago, but it, turns out that it was wow okay um let's go back a little bit you know i'm seeing i'm seeing the uh, chat room questions we're gonna get to those in a second but i do want to go back and talk about the game itself a lot of people are asking about sort of what your first impressions were uh of those other players from that first season so let's go with the big names first like what did you think about richard what did you think about rudy what did you think about sue i like richard richard is is straight uh, well, he's not, but You're I mean, right. yeah. <laughs> out of all the adjectives, yeah, no, yeah. he's a straight shooter. Yes, he he's he tells you like it is. Um, he's you know he is what he professes to be, and and uh, he and I have had some really great talks, and I I really like Richard. I like him as a person. Um, Been there, liked him there in Borneo. Yeah, I did. Yep. I okay. Did Borneo. Yeah. Um, and then what about? Let's go with uh, Sue next. Sue, um, Sue and I are not the, we're different kinds of people. And, um, and when we were at the, uh, like a lot transpired after, you know, because I was with that other tribe, like for a very short amount of time. And then, you know, when I watched back and I saw everything that went on, um, and heard about her speech. And, um, so the, when I got to see the speech, we were in the green room, it was the finale. Uh, we were waiting to go on stage and so they had put us all like in this little theater where we're watching and I sat next to Kelly and as it came down to that Kelly reached out and, and grabbed my hand and just tears were coming down like it, man I think what people don't realize is like the, that, that it's personal you know that it's um, it's not just like playing a hand of poker and then moving on or something it, it's personal and that was really personal um, and then what about, like, I think Rudy you already touched on, right? That you respected him, um, but that... You know what? I, I got to meet uh, Rudy's wife afterwards at some of the events. And once I met her, I loved him. I loved him because he, it said so much about him that he would marry that woman. And, um, and she was Rudy's keeper. And, uh, and, and I loved him so much more after I met his wife. Um, let's go through really quickly some of the Pagong people, uh, Jervis, Greg, Jenna, Colleen. Um, Jervis is the best. <laughs> Jervis is funny and he is, uh, he's a hard worker and he is, um, he gets along with every, I just love Jervis. Um, he's one of my favorites. 
him along with Ramona, like getting everybody together with Joel. When we all got together last year, it was so much fun. I think when you were talking about maybe bringing other people on, I'm like, that is the fun group right there. Right, no, yeah. I, well, everybody's loyal to their tribe. You know, like whenever I do one of these things, they want their tribe there, you know, so. Yeah. Um, yeah, and and, uh, and Jenna, she is a, she's a wild thing. I think everybody knows that by now. And but she would say stuff when we were there on the island, like have these open conversations with the, um, with the cameras on. And I would be like, girl, this, this is a, this is going to be on television. <laughs> Are you sure you want to say that? And she, she just is wild and she owns it. And I love her for that. Um, and, and tell me about this, like sort of, I'm sure I've asked you this like earlier too, but I'm sure you've seen Borneo. That's the one season I can pretty much like hang my hat that you actually did watch your season again. Um, when you watch it back, do you look at it and you're like, man, I wish I had done the Richard thing. I wish I had gotten like my majority of four. Have you ever said that to yourself? And if so, who would have been your other three? Um... It seems like you haven't even thought about that. I, I did. I think initially I did. Like, did I make a huge mistake? And mm -hmm. was this, you know, I, I did um, wrestle with it when I first got home because I thought, here, I took this time away from my family because my kids were kind of young and my mom had to come in for a month. And um, I thought, here, I took this time away from my family and I came back kind of empty handed. And, you know, did I, you know, trying to, be me did i take something from them mm -hmm. um i did think about it and who would i have you know i definitely it would have been jervis and uh and greg and jenna um who else was left at that point no, I mean, that's good. I mean, I just wanted to sort of yeah. get an idea of the power structure at Pagong, right? So, like, I, yeah. I feel like you were sort of in the, in the central. I just, I just, I've always felt like you were the Pagong leader. Like, I always, I know it's a, it's a weird comparison to make, you know, like Richard being the leader of Tagi and you being the leader of, like, Pagong, uh, because you're two, two totally different types of personalities. But I just feel like if anyone was going to get Pagong to pull up their socks, if anybody was going to get Pagong to, like, smarten up, it was going to be you. And I feel like that's why the brilliance of Richard's game is that he was able to recognize what you meant to that side and why removing you would just send them like, you know, ants after discarded food, which is exactly what happened, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. I, and he did. And, you know, he was, he had said multiple times, like, I'm not here to make friends. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. And, and he wasn't, <laughs> but I mean, he did. Um, but he was there to, to walk away with a million dollars. And, and it's uh, this thing that he keeps the balance of like, what, what is worth the million dollars, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. you know, to, 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 to lie to somebody to whatever. And I guess that that's the game, you know, is, is, is it worth, but there was like, something about that. And I know I keep reiterating this, but there was like something about there and not having that ever played out before where people go like, Oh, but it's part of the game. Right. Right that it was really hard to do to somebody. Uh, every time I wrote down someone's name, it was horrible. It was, it was horrible. Why was, uh, that so, why was that so difficult for you? Why was that so difficult for you? Because you knew that you were signing up for a game. Why is there any kind of ethical consideration when you knew going in that it was a game where people would get voted off and only one person would be left standing? Why is that so difficult for you? Because you're, you were living with those people. You were sharing meals with them. You were, you were meeting goals and building homes and, and doing all of that. And um, they became more like family than just strangers that are there. And you knew that each person had a, it's my dog. Each person had a, you know, they had a reason for being there. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, BB wanted the adventure and Jervis really wanted the money. And, you know, Greg wanted to be gray. <laughs> like if you wrote down someone's name, you were, you were Thank ending you you were ending their dream. Right, right. And and do you still do you still feel that way? Like I just find that part of it, I find that part of like your thoughts on it very interesting. Cause like I look at it and I'm just like, it's Borneo, it's Survivor. Only one person can win. My name is Gretchen Cordy. 
that person is going to be me. And I feel like you don't look at that question the same way that I do, you know? I know, but I will say that you haven't played. So right. if you then find that you, so the way that it's set up is you are first, you are first a team and you're working and you're doing all these things as a team. And then it's like, which member of your, I mean, just think about your own family. If you yes. were playing with your family, like exactly. who goes, which brother of yours has to, has to, has to go. And so you have to pick which one of your brothers goes or which one of your, you know, which one of your best friends, not that they were, you know, we were best friends or anything, but you, right. they're people and, and you've just won challenges with them or, had heart to hearts with them. I, I know it seems ridiculous. No, and a that's lot of the beauty of it. That's the beauty of it. That's why I like it. I like it so much is because it makes you question that. Like exactly what you just explained. The person that like was helping you get over that wall is now all of a sudden when the game goes to after the merge an impediment to your eventual win because it's an individual right. game. So I think that that's why. Is that, is that why do you feel like that's why the concept has worked? Because that core principle, what you just described I feel like hasn't changed. You know, the game might have, but that's still ultimately why it is the best game in the world, you know? Yeah, and you know, I, I see on Twitter that people who have played, you know, the game when, you know, like some of them don't talk to each other and some of them, you know, um, you know, I, I feel like uh, when I wrote down R Ramona's name, like I feel horrible about that to this day. And, and, uh, you know, and I love her dearly. And I just think that, um, you know, we've, she's been graceful enough to forgive me for that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, <laughs> you, you didn't get a vote obviously for the winner um, because you went right before, you know, the jury started. Um, who would you have voted for? Hmm. Okay, I would say- uh, And we'll answer it in two ways, Gretchen. We'll answer it like, I'll take me back to that time like when you were there, um, and then now, if the answer is different. Okay, so f let's, let's, can we do this? Like from when I was voted off, right? right. Um, when I was voted off, I would have voted for Kelly. Okay. Um, you know, there's a lot that transpired from the time that I was voted off to the time that the game ended. And I think at that point I would have voted for Rich. And, and what changed? Like, why? It's just stuff that I heard that went on afterwards. Mm -hmm. And um, and Rich really did play. I mean, would Kelly have been there if Rich hadn't kept her there? Right. If, if Rich had said, you know, let's say Richard was on Pagong. And let's say he had come up to you and he had said, look, Gretchen, I figured this game out, right? There is a loophole in this game. They want us to vote each other out, but if four of us all vote as a block, we determine who's getting voted off. What would your response to him have been if he approached you with that? Hmm. I can't say. I don't know. Um, yeah, no, probably, probably not. Because uh, yeah. truly, Joel, Joel said, you know, like, oh, this is what we should do. This is like that's that's what Joel was saying before he got voted out like we need to do this and they're probably doing it and we need to think about this before we go in and yeah. can you and hear this and it just wasn't a factor for you when he when he sort of gave you that dose of like reality I do, I just kind of thought it would pan out anyway mm -hmm. I mean their their tribe was um they, she's chewing on this bone and it's very loud and I didn't know if you could hear it. So nope, not at all, not at all. Okay, I'll give it back. <laughs> yeah, not at all. Um, yeah, I, I, I guess I thought, you know, they didn't even like each other. Like, Sue didn't like Rich and Rudy and like, they didn't, they didn't like each other. And I, I, I guess I thought it would implode at some point. Right. Do you, do you inherently believe that people are good? And has that, did that impression change from this show? I inherently believe that people are good. And I always believe that you should do the right thing. And, and did the right thing happen then? Did what Richard do was right? Do you feel like, you know, the good people, you know, the people with like clear 
Hearts, clear, you know, like those kinds of people, like the Jervises, you know, the the Gregs, the people like Jenna's, you know, the people who had the best intent. Did this serve as a lesson to them that the world isn't a nice place? I don't think so, because I mean, the game is just such a small part of your life. And if you look at their lives overall, like yeah. Greg, his own company, you know, because he's a hard worker and a smart man. And, um, you know, I did some math the other day and I, I, I'm not wouldn't say anything to you that I wouldn't say to him, but had Rich taken his $500,000 and invested it in Apple in September of the year that he won, he would have $39 million right now. Wow. <laughs> wow. But would you have done that? Or is that just like, is it just like Monday morning quarterbacking? Like, let's say you would want. Oh, that's definitely Monday morning. I didn't have the money, but I would have paid my taxes. So yes, <laughs> yes, yes. Um, I want to know sort of like, how old are your kids now? Um, yeah, we'll start with that. Um, my son is in the Air Force. Uh, he was born in 86. Um, my daughter, yeah, do the math. And my daughter is I mean, married. 46, if my math is right, right? No, wait, younger. So six by uh, 34. Yeah. 34. And, I, I went the wrong way with my math. Yes. Yeah. And my, um, my daughter is, uh, she was born in 90, and she is married to a military guy. They're in Colorado Springs right now. Can I guess? So 90. Okay. Let's see how good my math is. So that would make. Well, it's 20. That's one. <laughs> what, 40? 40? She's 30. 30, okay. Well, well, yeah. She'll be 30 this year, yeah. Um, I want to know, so then that would make them, okay, so she was born in 90, so what, she was like 10 when you played? I, yeah, was she, yeah, she she must have been 10. I thought she was 8, but she must have been 10, yeah. Okay. Um, I want to know sort of what, what their impressions are. Like, when they look at you, do they realize that, like, you were part of, in in what my opinion is, the biggest pop culture phenomenon of our lifetime. I, I genuinely feel that's what Survivor is. I feel like when we look back from an entertainment perspective, you know, leaving aside like the real world of like pandemics and like protests, you know, like I feel like from a pop culture perspective, nothing will beat this. I feel like generations from now, this is what we're going to be remembered for. Do they look at you and do they realize the significance of what you were a part of? Um, I... I think it's significant now and it wasn't significant when they were little. I do remember there was this, you know, the, where it slowly became, I remember we went out to eat one time when it was airing and uh, as we normally did, and we were sitting at a table, we ended up having to get our food to go because people didn't want to be rude and come up to the table. But at the same time, they were like, that's that girl, that's that girl. And uh, it did change our lives for for a short time and um they were you know it was just it was part of what they were used to and then it kind of went away but i mean since i've been on the radio ever since right you know they i'm kind of someone that's known it's i don't live in a large town so it's kind of like someone that's known around town and right just, that's just kind of how they grew up did that, would you say that, I was going to ask you about that, so this is a good opportunity, like, would you say that, like, obviously your life changed because of the show, is the radio gig that you're doing now, is that part of that, you know, like, would you have gotten the radio gig if not for, like, being Gretchen from Survivor? No, actually, because um, when Survivor was over and we were allowed to do stuff, like, you know, I knew that there was, like, a very short window of opportunity where, you know, I could raise money for charities and stuff, so I didn't say no to any charity and i i was like the honorary this and the honorary that for everything in town and we had a company that had just come in and bought up a cluster of radio stations and the new general manager i was at a bowl for kids sake or something and the new general manager saw me speak and he said um i think you'd be really good on the radio and uh they gave me a trial time of a week or something and i've been there ever since so and how long ago was that 19 years ago, <laughs> was like wow. right after, yeah. Um, so you said that uh, people still sort of like came up to you. Um, I guess that doesn't happen obviously as much anymore, but they did, right? Like I would say 2001, 2002, were you sort of flooded with attention when you would go to a restaurant with your family? We just didn't, we just stopped going places. Yeah. I remember going to the commissary once and, and buying the, this was while it was still airing and we went to the commissary and my daughter and I, we bought all these groceries. 
and someone made an announcement over the loudspeaker. And then when I went through the checkout line, there was like a line of people to sign autographs. And I was probably there for an uh, hour and a half, you know, with my grocery cart and my little girl standing next to me. And I just, I told her, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. You know, we'll, we'll be more careful in the future. Um, it was, it, I'm going to say that it was fun. Like you got to do a lot of stuff a lot of places that I wouldn't ever have normally been able to go, you know, and, and, and be on shows and, um, but it, it wears on you. And I would say that, uh, you know, everybody that wishes they could be famous, it's not for everybody. Right. Like, you know, Jenna and Jervis and Joel, like they, they ate it up and they loved it and it was good for them. Uh, for me. And I think I'm more to like the, the Colleen side, you know, where yeah. it's just, it can, it can really, if you, if you like your privacy, it's not for you. When was the last time you were asked to sign and or take a photo with someone? Oh, well, cause I'm on the radio, you know. No, but it's, oh, it's purely survivor, purely survivor related. Oh, for survivor. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, I know what it was. <laughs> I had concrete work done at my house and um, the, a couple months ago. And the guy who drove the concrete truck recognized me and said, oh, can I get an autograph? Yeah. Um, so I think, I think this is a good opportunity for me to share this story. Um, the story that I've been like saving as my big surprise for this whole like interview. I don't know if uh, when I first contacted you, I don't know if you remembered my face because we had a very amusing interaction many, 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 many years ago, a different lifetime ago. Do you remember or no? I didn't, because, you know, like when you're on Twitter and you see like this little dot of a person right. and stuff, I didn't, I didn't, but when you said it, then I did. Yes, okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna share this with, uh, with everyone here and like for all the playbacks. Um, so Gretchen, believe it or not, is really the one responsible for changing the course of my lifetime. It's why I'm never going to introduce my parents to Gretchen because they will look at her as the person that sort of got me to drop out of law school. Um, <laughs> And the reason for this is because when I watched the show, back when I watched it in Borneo, like in 2000, I was 20. Um, and as I said, I sort of like, I recognized right away that this was going to be a big thing. And like, it was my chance to get in on the ground floor of something right when it got started. You know, everybody always says, oh, just like you said, should have gotten in on Apple, you know, like when it first came right. out. So that, that's what Survivor was for me. I just wanted to immediately just jump on it. Um, and so... I guess the first thing, the first idea was maybe we should start like a website. Maybe we should start like writing recaps about the show. What happens for anyone who missed it? You know, it's, I'm taking you back to like revisionist history. But one of the first things that came across my desk at the time was I got this uh, notice that, you know, Gretchen was going to be in Toronto and that she was appearing at Canada's Wonderland for this like Q&A session. So I said to my friend, I'm like, oh my God, oh my God, I'm like, this person from season one is going to be a Canada's Wonderland. I'm like, we got to go. We got to go. So then he was like, well, when do you want to go? And I'm like, I don't know. She's coming at like one o'clock. We should probably get there at like 6 a.m. Like, I don't know. This show is like, huge. <laughs> like people are, you know, people are going to be like lined up and like, and you know what? You can laugh, but that was totally the right call. Like there was a lot of people there. I don't know if you remember, but like, I was certainly glad we got there before the park opened. So we get there and, uh, you were sitting in like the front row and like, I remember so many details about this, like the person anchoring this thing, this Q and a, there was like a moderator with a mic and she would go around and ask everyone if they had a question for Gretchen. It was uh, you and I think Ramona was there too. I don't know if you did it together, but Ramona was definitely there. I think they split you, you did one and then she did the other. I don't really know. Yeah, I, I don't know if that so. strikes a bell to you. you um, yeah. But, um, but the gist of the story is that the first thing uh, that this moderator said is, um, she said, look, we know there's a lot of attention here for Gretchen. You know, like Gretchen is not going to be signing autographs. That's why I was asking all these autograph questions. She's not going to be like taking a lot of photos. She's just going to be doing a Q&A session. So I said to my friend, I'm like, look, I'm getting this photo with Gretchen. I don't care like what this comes down to. I am ready to be like thrown out of here. I am ready to just be banned from Canada's Wonderland like forever, but I am getting this photo. So then he's like, well, how are you going to get this photo? I said, you just let me worry about that. All right. Just when the time comes, you just snap. I said, that's your job in this plan. You just snap. 
So she comes around with the mic. Um, and she's like, all right, who has a question for like Gretchen? Before she can even like ask or look at hands, I'm already standing up, right? I already knew that if I stood up, she'd have to come to me first. So she comes by and she's like, do you have a question for Gretchen? I'm like, yeah. I'm like, um, you know, Gretchen, I drove all the way here from Florida. We have been on the, do you remember this or not? Oh, wait, your, your audio just, uh, your audio just muted. Uh, hang on, Mike, let me see. I think it was something that you just touched. Hang on, uh, Mike, can we fix our, Gretchen, can you turn your mic back on? Because you are not coming in at all. Oh, there, okay. And now, uh, yep, I think you're back. Yeah. So, do you remember this or no? Yeah, it's coming back to me. Okay. Yeah. And do you remember, okay, do you remember the question? The question was, oh, you know, like we drove all the way from like Florida and we've been in the car and, you know, I haven't been, you know, like I haven't eaten anything in like 16 hours. And I was just like, my mom said that if I make my way to Toronto, I have to get a photo with you because she thinks you're a role model for homemakers everywhere. Do you remember <laughs> this or no? Yes. Okay. So, <laughs> so then... Uh, obviously the moderator is not happy that I like, she just two seconds ago said, we're not getting any photos. The first guy that like stands up is asking for a photo. Right. And you obviously said, yeah, sure. You know, and like, you know, they created this whole big thing. Like after you had left, like everybody was all upset, you know, like Wonderland had talked to me and they said, I shouldn't have done that. Regardless, I ended up getting the photo. Now, why is that photo so important? Why have I told you this whole long story? It's because it was that photo that basically really made our plan. Like I was just like, well, I got this photo with like Gretchen. Why don't we try and get more? And so then the next year I went to the finale and I basically like just crashed this finale, got photos with like everyone. When I got the photos with everyone, I got them to start, you know, becoming guest writers for my website. That's how the website sort of like took off. And then from there, um, when CBS stopped doing the finale parties, uh, officially, right? Like after season like nine, they stopped doing any kind of like party at all. That's when me and my partner started taking the parties over. And I'm telling you, it was just one thing after another, after another, but it all started with that photo. And so the reason that I say this story is I asked you earlier in the interview, do you think people are inherently good? And you said, yes, I yeah. do not feel people are inherently good. I feel like that story shows you that like I was willing to deceive to lie like i'm telling you that i drove all the way from florida my house is 10 minutes from canada's wonderland okay i was willing to do whatever it took to get that photo right and so i guess my lesson from this is that yeah like i think the right call was made you know like certainly if i didn't get that photo would i have started the website would i have gotten my own reality show like would i still be in the entertainment industry as a person no i don't think so i really feel that photo is what started this whole cycle of changing my life, you know? And so that's the story that I wanted to share with you. And here's the surprise, okay? Here's the surprise for everyone. I know you've been waiting for this. I'm going to bring it to you. First, I was just going to, first, I was just going to like show the photo, but here's yeah. what I did with it, okay? Because this photo I basically have as my inspiration every day. Like when I look at this photo, it's like, I will lie, I will cheat, I will steal, and at the end, I will succeed. I'm going to show it to you now, okay? Wait, wait till you see how big it is. One sec. I have to, like, actually go and get it. Oh, my God. Go okay, wait. Are you ready? <laughs> yes, I think. Okay, okay wait. <laughs> it's 30 by 40. Can you guys see it? Tell me in the chat room if you can see it. <laughs> oh, my Lord. <laughs> this was taken in, like, I don't know, like, 2001 or something. Wow. Now, the best part about this photo, too, is check out this woman who is like a gas here on the side. Just like, what is wrong with this guy? I don't know. <laughs> That's my page. Like, people said, why didn't you crop that out? And I'm like, no, it's part of the story. There we go. All right. So, there it is. But yes, Gretchen. So, certainly, okay, there was why I wanted you to be the one to do this interview, um, marking the 20th anniversary of the show 40 seasons of the show but you were the one who really like changed everything you changed the really the scope of my life with that photo had you said no had you said you know when I did this whole scam oh my mom really wants this like photo I have to show her a photo with you I just I often go back to myself and I go I wonder what would have happened if Gretchen said no like if she had just said oh no like you know I'm not really feeling the photo 
would I still be doing Survivor? Would I still be in the reality business? Would I still be doing these like finale parties every season? You know, it's it's, it's like the really, butterfly effect, right? Like it so really is. this photo is really the linchpin for like everything, you know, and it's amazing that it, you know, we took it like 18 years ago and what's changed. 18 years later, you know? So anyway, so that's what I wanted to end the interview on. But before we do, I'm just going to get to, if anyone has any uh, last minute questions for Gretchen in the chat room. Oh. Okay, this inherently good thing, right? Yes, yes. So, all right. So I leave there and I have to get on a plane because the same company that owns that owns something in North Carolina or South Carolina or something. I can't remember. Oh yeah, like the, the theme park place? Yeah. Yeah, okay, so yeah. I I was supposed to be there the next day. When I, fl when I flew to Canada, I asked the lady at the, you know, that, was, that I was getting my ticket from, yeah. my airline ticket, I said, do I need my passport? She's like, to go to Canada? No. Oh, okay. What she didn't tell me was, you need your passport to get back yeah, to the United States. Back. Yeah, that's right, that's right. So I don't know if she thought like I was, just going to stay or something so I I'm coming through customs and like or, or you know whatever you have to do and they asked me for my passport I'm like they told me I didn't need it they're like oh you need it to come back to the United States I'm like well I don't have it and they're just like well you're gonna have to get it yeah and I said well I have to be somewhere like tomorrow I'm I'm like I have a business thing that I got to do tomorrow and she's like well I don't know what to tell you and then the guy in next to her that was checking people's uh, credentials yeah. um, looked over and he goes, hey, you're that girl from Survivor. And I'm like, yes, I am. And he goes, I'll let her in. That's how that worked. <laughs> See? So you, it's funny because you're seeing it as like good karma. And I'm looking at it like, man, if I didn't, if I didn't like say what I said, there's no way. Like, there's no way. And I'm sorry, Gretchen, that is a fact. Like, you were there. They were not <laughs> allowing photos. You know that they weren't, you know? Um, right. So, you know, I mean, I mean, like I said, since that time, and I'm not even kidding when I say this, um, you know, uh, Big Mike, I think you're here. You have a, a lot of photos too. But I mean, I think between the two of us, we've pretty much met every cast member aside from like Borneo, like between us. Um, but that's the one, you know, like that's the photo that like I chose to have as like my, my inspiration that I'm anything is achievable. Anything is, anything is achievable. The funniest part about this is one last little side note is that I ended up working for Entertainment Tonight Canada, which is also owned by Global, the network that airs Survivor here. And that, that moderator, the Q&A moderator from Your Thing, was like a host at Global too. So years later, when I'm in the office, I see her and she's like, you look really familiar. And I go, yeah, I can tell you who I am. And she's <laughs> like, who? And I'm like, you remember Gretchen Cordy? She's like, oh, that thing at Wonderland. I said, yeah, she, she's like, yeah. like, are you that guy? And I'm like, yeah. She's like, what the hell are you doing here? I thought you lived in Florida. And I'm like, you know what? I've got the photo. Okay. That's all you need to know. Um, all right. Let's, let's. You, you, but then you didn't hurt anybody. You didn't, it didn't but it's hurt so unethical. This whole thing about like ethics, I feel like it was a very unethical thing to do, you know? <laughs> um, and, I, and I remember. The best part of it, there's so many stories I could tell you. And then the whole time I like come back and I'm like, oh, here, mom, here's the photo. You know, I like said that you really wanted this. This is how I got it. She's like, who's that? <laughs> you, you like Johnny Fair played me. Is what it's happened. true. It's true. Yeah. It's true. All right. Really quick. We're going to let her go. We're, we're past our time. Um, any other questions? Uh, just let me know in the chat. I'm just going to read them really quick. Uh, okay. Questions right now. We're going to take about, uh, let's take three. The first one is, Hey, Gretchen, are there any funny or memorable stories you can remember of your season, uh, particularly at Ponderosa when you were hanging with the other people that were voted off? Um, I, I only stayed for, like, you didn't have to stay the whole time because nobody knew, right, that, that you were even doing a show. Um, and uh, there was, <laughs> so, um, yeah, we went out and uh, there was a bar that was kind of attached to the resort that we stayed at. And uh, it was it was Greg and myself and um, Ramona and a couple of the producers and stuff. And there was somebody who was pervy. I'm not going to say who it was, but like we all had to deal with this person. Somebody um, on the cast? No. Okay. No. Um, somebody on the, on the, sh on yeah. the show. Okay. And, got it. Uh, 
and so we went um we went out and we just we ate and we drank and we ate and we drank and we had this huge bill <laughs> and Greg signed it to his room. <laughs> oh my gosh. But I was only there for three days and then we, you know, but all we thought about was eating. I swear to God, like we, like Ramon and I went um, down downtown and we were just walking around and we stopped and we got fries and we stopped and we got ice cream and we stopped. Like we didn't like, we all gained weight like you gained back the weight that you got and then some after we came back. It was horrible. <laughs> um, any other questions? Mike, I think uh, I saw your one about the first impressions, but I think we already covered that. Uh, let me see. Anything else? I'm going to give it two more minutes. Oh, um, did you get to hang out with the jury as well? You know how like now they separate it really into like pre-jury and like jury? Were you able to sort of like hang out with the jury members? I left. I, I flew home. You know, I had little kids, and so I, I just got on the plane, like, literally three days afterwards, I got oh, on no the plane. Oh, no way. Oh, wow. Yeah, I went home, yeah. Wow, okay. And anything else? I think we're good. This is the last call. Mike Kimura, do you have any questions? I'm just going to wait for him. Uh, no, I'm just happy to finally meet you. I have <laughs> I don't have the history that Mike and, uh, and Merch do, but I've met probably 300 or plus or closer to 400 survivors now, but Borneo is the hard one to meet everybody. <laughs> Mike, would you lie to have a picture with me? Oh, well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. And did you see, did you see Mike's background here? He actually stole the same background from yeah. Jeff uh, that he just did the Zoom finale with. You can steal lots of backgrounds. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. That, that is from the, um, that little mini reunion we had last year. Yeah. Wow. Oh, oh wow. my god. Look at all right. Well, Gretchen, it uh wow, look at this. You're really showing off here, okay? Can I can I pick up something real fast before we go? Yes. Okay. So um I'm the one that if you rewatch the show, you'll see that when when Jeff holds up the thing, it says Joel and it's got a backwards J, right? Look for that. And um so we're we're going back and someone said we're walking we're walking back from tribal council and someone said like who was the idiot that made the backward day and it was me and it was because when they were giving us instructions and i'm a rule follower they said literally write so the camera can read and i thought that meant <laughs> but mirror can, mirror yeah so yeah. i'm i had written everybody's name like upside down to that point. And when I went to write the J, I wrote it backwards, but you had that one piece of paper. So like my choices were like, scribble it out, write the J again, or let it go. <laughs> so, oh so, man. It's so stupid. Oh my gosh. I do remember that actually. I mean, that's the season. Borneo is the one that I've watched like the most, right? Cause I feel like it's the prototype for everything, you know? So, but I do remember, I definitely remember what you're talking about. Yeah. Uh, and, and finally, so where are you now? Like what city are you in? And where's this I radio show? I, we were voted last year the best uh, city to live in the United States. It's Clarksville, Tennessee. It's a wonderful place. And same place, right? You haven't moved since then? Nope, same place. No. It's uh, Fort Campbell and 101st and 160th, and it's, um, it's a really nice place to live. Best How far place are you from Knoxville? Um, like, well, we're, we're just north of Nashville. It's like 40, 50 miles to Nashville, so... And then Knoxville's like halfway to Sevierville. So wow. Isaac's in Nashville. <laughs> That's actually, that was actually the home of the, uh, the very, you know, I, I have all these like weird statistics, but that was Nashville was the home of the first ever reality TV convention a few years ago. You obviously didn't hear about it. Um, no, nope. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I've been to them all. Um, so yes, Gretchen, I think I'm going to let you go now. Thank you so much. This was definitely one that I really wanted to do. I've been trying to track you down for, I don't know how long, but then I finally said, this is the year to do it because it's 20 years since the show, 20, 20 years since the photo. Like, I felt like this was the one that like, we have to do it now, you know? Um, and the first thing I'm going to do, the first thing I'm going to do with this recording is I'm going to send it to that moderator who hosted that <laughs> Q&A. That's the first thing that's happening. Uh, everyone, thank you so much. Gretchen, thank you so much. Um, we're going to be planning a, a, a big one. Like, I'm going to be planning a big reunion. Um, at some point, Gretchen, I will invite you to that. It'll be another Zoom call. 
uh, and I'll let everyone know. But thank you so much. Thanks for your time. Uh, I thank hope you have a great season. I hope at some point, reconnecting with me, my goal is to get you to watch Survivor again, maybe next season, but that's going to be my ultimate goal. Okay, maybe. Yes. Okay. I want I want your your analysis after the next season. So that'll be my goal. I'm going to get Hulu for you, or I'll figure something out. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everyone, thank you so much. We're going to let it go now. Everyone, uh, thanks bye, bye. so much. All right, thanks. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye.